Okay, let's talk about ghosters. And it's hard to be succinct about this topic because there's so much to say. But if you don't know what a ghoster is, it's basically somebody who stops replying to your messages. And this person is probably somebody that you were either dating or in some sort of a romantic relationship with. And it sucks. Ghosting sucks. If you are the recipient of somebody ghosting you, uh, it can feel crazy making because you just don't know what happened. You don't know what happened because they don't give you closure. And closure is great. I say nobody owes you closure and I stand by that. And I also stand by the fact that it's really nice to know when somebody doesn't want to be with you anymore and takes the time to let you know. It feels like a basic courtesy. Really, like really basic courtesy. And yet, ghosting is a super prevalent practice. I hear about it on a daily basis. Either people are ghosters and they feel okay about it, or people have been ghosting and it just drives them bananas. So what the hell? Like, what the hell is going on? Why are people ghosting? And there's a whole bunch of reasons, a few of them actually valid, a lot of them just kind of shitty. So people ghost because uh, they literally don't know how to do it differently. Like, they won't, they weren't shown how to just tell somebody that they're not interested in them. The idea of rejecting somebody makes them so uncomfortable, they just can't possibly do it. Or they don't want to hurt another person's feelings, and they think that it's better to ghost than it is to reject. And some people actually say, I would rather you ghost me than reject me to my face. So that's why ghosting is super tricky, because there are people that prefer to be ghosted. Okay, so some other reasons why people ghost, and this is the most important one, and this one's actually really valid. Some women feel really uncomfortable rejecting men because some men are super, super fragile. And they'll either blow up or they'll ask, you know, dozens of questions about what went wrong or what they could have done differently. Or worst case scenario, they'll be like borderline stocky and could lead to some danger. This is a reason that I've heard time and time again. So... If this is you, if you're in this kind of situation and you need to go to keep yourself safe, cool, do it. Absolutely, 100% do it. And other people just go because they they don't want to have a mildly uncomfortable conversation. And to those people, I want to invite you to do it differently. To say, hey, I had a really nice time with you and the connection that you and I have is not a connection that I'm looking for. Take good care of yourself. Good luck. See you later. And that's it. That's the antidote to ghosting for most people. And let me be clear about something here. When you reject somebody and then they send you a bunch of messages after and you decide you don't reply reply because you don't feel like it anymore, that's not ghosting. You've already done your part by letting them know that you're no longer interested. If they come back, you can send one message by saying, hey, I'm not really available to discuss this with you. Take care. And after that, it's over. Like your your responsibility ends. There's nothing left to do. And if they keep sending you messages, that's not ghosting. You you not replying to those messages isn't ghosting. It's you taking care of yourself. You set a boundary. They violated the boundary. You set a consequence, which is you ignore them or you block them. (sighs) Okay. If you are the recipient of a ghoster or a ghosting, if someone ghosted you, (laughs) That's, for the most part, somebody not treating you with the kind of respect that you deserve. And I get a lot of questions from people saying like, you know, I got ghosted, but the guy's back. What should I do? And to that, I reply, what are you doing? They've already shown you that they're not the kind of person who can take care of you in a way that makes sense, who respects you, who is kind and considerate. 
So to me, that person has lost any privilege to be in my life. Any, any and all privilege. That's just not somebody that I want to engage with. And I'm not sorry about it. Life is precious. And it's both long and really short. And what we can all agree on is there is not enough time in the day to do everything we want to do. And that includes to spend time with the people that mean a lot to us and that are awesome. So why would we entertain letting a ghoster back into our life? If they have shown you that they cannot take care of you with kindness and respect. So the answer to what do I say when a ghoster comes back and wants to hang out is no thank you. I really, I mean, that that's all you need. And if you feel like expanding, I really don't, didn't like the way that our relationship ended and I'm not available to continue it in any way, shape or form. Goodbye. I'm not saying ghosters can't change. Everybody can change. But for the most part, they probably won't. So focus on people that treat you well. Now, other people will say, how come the guy or the person who ghosted me still watches my stories? What does that mean? Nothing. Doesn't mean anything. It means that they still find you cute enough to look at your stories, but not cute enough to treat you with respect. Or because they just look through a ton of stories and don't even think about how you might be interpreting them looking at your stories. And the question that I have to somebody who's aware of somebody who goes to them, look at their stories is why is that person still able to look at your stories? If you ghost me and I somehow find out that you're looking at my stories, which I don't look at who looks at my stories, but I know that Instagram shows you the three people. Right. So if your ghoster is that third person, well, why are they still looking at your stories? Is because you've let them. You haven't blocked them. If somebody ghosts me, they lose the privilege of having access to my life. You don't get to look at my stories if you ghost me. If you treat me poorly, you don't get to look at my stories. I'm going to block you, even though I don't block people. But I know that blocking is a really important thing and it's a good tool. I just haven't had to block people. Also, I have a lot of followers, so I don't look at who looks at my stories. For me, Instagram is marketing and business and connecting with my community. It's not a personal connection device. And I know that social media is for a lot of people. So if you've been, if you've been ghosted by somebody, unfollow and block them so they can't see what's going on. Then you don't have to think about them. Just like for the most part, they're not thinking about you. They really aren't. The beautiful thing about being ghosted is that, yes, it's a form of rejection, but rejection is beautiful because it creates space in your life. When you are rejected or somebody rejects you, they're just saying, I'm not for you. I don't want what you want. And they're removing themselves from your life if you'll let them. And that creates space for a better fit, somebody who's more aligned. That's why rejection is beautiful. And I'll talk about this more in an upcoming podcast on the beauty of rejection. And when a ghoster ghosts, they're removing themselves from your life. Let them go. You have better things to do than to pine over somebody who doesn't want to be with you. Have a beautiful week.